Greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is still doing well, and welcome to tonight's second half. Before we jump into this very terrifying set of Michigan dogman encounters, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadalny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe, it doesn't cost a cent. Click that like button, takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. And folks, they definitely do matter. Now everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump into tonight's second half, shall we? Alright guys, uh, really quick, we are approaching probably like the midway point until tonight's saturday nightmares live from new york with you and i um i'm still going to do it uh i had pretty rough day today with my mom and uh we had to make the decision to put my dad into palliative care today uh so I think that's the only thing that's probably going to make my day a little brighter is tonight's live stream. So I hope to see you guys there. And uh, thank you for all of the prayers that you guys have sent uh, towards my mom, myself, and my dad. Let's get into this. Today's first Michigan subscriber encounter. Hey Jeff, I was sitting in the woods on a tree trunk on my property in Cadillac, Michigan. It was roughly 9 in the morning in September of 2014. I heard a twig snap. I looked behind me and I saw a creature. This creature was unlike anything I had ever seen. My heart was pounding and I started to sweat when I saw it. The creature was orange, like a common fox up here, but it stood easily 7 feet high with eyes the color of gold coins. The creature had human-like hands, but covered in orange fur, and had claws, but also had hooves on its legs that I could hear when it ran. I only had a few seconds to see it before it ran away, hearing the distance of its hooves hitting the ground and fading away. That same day, I tried to get my neighbor's hunting cams, but they said there was no video card in it. But I hope someone else see this creature. Today's second subscriber, Michigan Dogman Encounter. Hey Jeff, I'd like to share something with you. The summers in northern Michigan, Cadillac, Michigan, can be long, drawn-out days of sweltering humidity. Midsummer daylight can last till almost 11 p.m., I was about 10 or 12 years old. With an older brother and sister, my dad owned his own construction business and kept late hours. We lived out in the country and our house sat on 20 acres of wooded land. Pine Tree Grove to our north, hardwood and pine mix to the southwest and east. There was a small creek that ran through our backyard and would lead back to a beaver dam. About three miles or so up the road from us was an old landfill. Now I'd like to mention my dad owned his own business and worked late hours. Often he would come home around 9 to 10 p.m. And after being out in the heat all day, he would find more comfort in his full-size dually Ford with the air conditioning and a cold beer. 
So we would come home and often pick my mom up and they would just go cruising the endless country dirt roads, enjoying beer and catching up on the day's events. Quite often they would drive down the road that led to the old landfill, which was basically a dead-end road. They would park on the side of the road very close to the ditch. My dad used to do that to freak my mom out. The country roads in northern Michigan grew very thick brush that extended through the ditch and right up to the very edge of the road. My dad would tease my mom, saying a bear is going to press its nose against the window and roar. They have done this cruising thing for years and generally only saw an occasional raccoon or deer. My parents came into the house somewhat rushed. My mom led. My dad followed, trying to explain something. I asked what happened. My dad explained the following. We were parked down the road, going to Smiley's. As we sat there, your mother said she could hear something moving around the brush. It was 11 p.m., so it's dark now. My dad apparently tried to ease my mom by saying, if it were a bear, it would have eaten her by now. The night ended. A few days later, my parents again went there to hang out and parked in the same spot. It got dark, and again, my mom was the first to hear something in the woods on her side of the truck. This time, they both heard it, though. This time, it was much larger. Large sticks were breaking and snapping this time. My dad figured it was a deer or a black bear. They turned on the radio and sat and listened. My mom said she could hear something breathing out there. My dad soon also heard the same thing. It was getting closer, and then they felt it brush against the side of the truck that was near the ditch. It caused the truck to sway. My mom screamed and insisted they get out of there. Again, they came home and told of the experience. My dad figured it must have been one big bear as he sped off, looking in his rearview mirror. The large black object was bounding across the road, sort of going from two-legged run to all fours and disappeared into the darkness. I remember just being amazed at the story. You see, my dad is a simple man. Life then was cut and dry, black and white, everything can be explained. But there was something different in his eyes that told me he was, con was not convinced, nor when he glanced at my mom and she would return this look of fear that I will never forget. The after-work cruising had stopped. My mom refused to go. My dad would come and sit at the table in our dining room with the lights off and discuss the day in the dark with my mom. Living in the country in Michigan with no air conditioning meant that at night every window in the house would be open. Things had been quiet for a few days. It was around 11.30 p.m. and us kids were all in bed. I shared a room with my older brother, and my sister was next door. I must have just drifted off, and it happened. The most terrifying howl-slash-scream I had ever heard. It was so loud, it was as if it was right next to the house. I can still hear the sound in my head as it happened just the other day. Growing up in the country in northern Michigan and being outdoors all day until dark, you hear it all. My dad was a hunter and knew all native animal sounds, but what we heard that night, none of us, not even my dad, could say what it was. Upon hearing that screechy howl and near tin myself, I heard my dad jump up and slam the dining room chair into the wall, exclaiming to my mom, Get my 12 gauge. My brother and I are now in the dining room along with my sister who heard the howl. My dad's composure was different now. It was fight or flight, and he was getting his loaded gun. This was more than a bear. We have had bears in our backyard before, and my dad would just use a flashlight and yell at them, and they would usually move on. This night was different. My dad told my mom to shut the sliding glass door after he walked out into the backyard. I remember looking out the back window from a safe distance as my dad disappeared into the darkness with his gun and a flashlight. We had just one light on the back of our house near the door, which didn't offer much light beyond 20 feet or so. My dad was now walking straight out into our backyard towards the small storage shed. Our backyard was cleared and mowed about eight acres back to the creek. 
and ten acres wide, north and south. It was like we just cut out a chunk of woodland and stuck a house in the middle. Being surrounded by all the pines and hardwood was usually an advantage to Michiganers in the winter time because it was a natural snow fence. However, this night there was only one advantage, and it wasn't in my dad's favor. He walked with his gun shouting nervously, as I remember, hoping to run off whatever the heck was out there. I was still standing in the dining room, which led directly into the living room, where we had a large window which showed the front yard. There was moonlight, and the sky was clear. I remember looking out the front room window and seeing a large, dark object run across our driveway, alternating from back legs to all fours, similar to how you may see a gorilla run. My brother saw it and yelled out to my dad through the kitchen window, It's out front, and it's heading to the side yard to your right. My dad stood out there, frozen, listening, and it got quiet. We heard nothing from the house. We had a dog outside that never made a sound. I remember thinking, Rex is dead. This dog barked at everything except tonight. He barked once upon the initial howl and then felt silent. My dad came rushing back into the house after what seemed to be an eternity. He told my mom to shut and lock all the windows and the doors. He then said something to this day gives me the chills. He said, I don't know what the heck is out there, but whatever it is, I felt like I was being hunted. He then explained that once it ran into the pine trees to the north, it was staying just inside of the tree line, keeping cover. As he walked, it would move. He heard branches breaking, sticks cracking loudly from its weight. He would occasionally catch a glimpse of something dark and then see the branches jiggle. The creature kept moving. At one point, as my dad stood still, he could hear it continue to move west, then south, then east, on the other side of him. That was when he came back in and decided to lock down the house. Whatever it was, he felt it clearly had the upper hand, regardless of a gun and flashlight. My dad sat up for the rest of the night in the kitchen with his gun on his lap. It was probably an hour or so later that I again was awakened by this hideous scream of a rabbit being captured. Anyone who has ever heard a rabbit cry will understand this. My dad stated, That son of a is after the rabbits. The dog in the backyard never barked. The next morning, my brother and I went out to have a look around. My dog Rex was all right, but he stayed cowered in the back of his doghouse. He had to be coaxed out. We wandered out behind the shed and saw something that blew our minds. Our shed simply sat on the ground, no cement foundation. Rabbits had burrowed tun tunnels under it. And we had a population of around 50 or so rabbits that just ran free in our yard. But when we walked out into the back of the shed, there was a huge pile of sand and a tunnel that I could have surely fit into. There were huge claw-like marks where it was digging. We could make out impressions of what appeared to be maybe the rear end and two heel-like prints out in front. I remember me of how you see a child sitting in a sandbox digging a hole with its feet planted in front of them and the hands would drag the sand back and push it to either side. There was rabbit hair everywhere. A few rabbits that survived thumped their feet and ran off into the brush, obviously still nervous. From what had taken place earlier, we told my dad when we saw him again, and he just had this look on his face that was less than convincing when he said, it must have been coyotes or something. I guess we knew to ourselves what he really meant. None of us really knew. But in times like this, and at my age, an answer is an answer and I was able to find some reassurance, but have always known that there was more to it. I don't ever remember hearing the creature again after that, but there would be times when I felt like something was watching me from the tree line. We never really spoke much of it after that night. Even to this day, my dad still has that unassured look when he tries to give an explanation. My mom sticks to the dogman story. Me, 
I find the woods in northern Michigan to be a place of enchantment and great mystery. There's something out there. The Native American tribes of Michigan knew it. Now, we do as well. Today's second subscriber, Michigan Dogman Encounter. Hey Jeff, I have a few somewhat encounters. I call them somewhat because I didn't see a dogman of any of the times, but this is what I experienced. I live in northern Michigan, about two hours south of Traverse City, and about an hour and a half from Lake Michigan. I lived practically in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by woods and fields. We have a lot of deer and a lot of coyote, so you already know we have the legend of the Michigan dogman. Let me give out a few pointers about my life and where I live. One, I have lived in the same house since I was six months old. I basically know all of the creatures that live around my home. Two, I have always been more afraid of going out after dark just because I get the feeling that I'm being watched, always. Especially from the right south of the house where there are trees and shrubs. Three, I knew about werewolves with my first encounter, but didn't know about the Michigan Dogman until I was in fifth grade. Since then, I have been engrossed about learning more about it. My first experience happened when I was about five, around May of 2004. I was asleep in my bedroom, which shared a wall with my parents' bedroom. It was thundering outside, and our huge dog named Lightning was inside because she was terrified of storms. She was a German Shepherd Chow mix, and let me tell you, she was mistaken for a bear quite a bit. Anyway, I was sleeping in my bedroom when I awoke with the feeling of a deep and primal fear. I was frozen stiff. Then I heard it, the howl. It was an unearthly and unhuman. It was low and right outside of my window, which faced the north at the time. It was about a 10 second howl. All the hair stood up on my body. I know what coyotes sound like, and this was not one of those. It shook my rib cage, and my adrenaline kicked in. I ran into my parents, which is where my parents' dog, Lightning, was sleeping. I climbed onto their bed and started to cry. My mom asked what was wrong, and I said, There's a werewolf outside, Mom. She replied, no, honey, it's our dog. Go back to bed. But the dog's inside. They both would have woken up to that, and they didn't. The howl still kind of haunts me to this day. My second experience was in August of 2012. I was 13. We had two German Shepherds. Their names were Ale and Whiskey, both kennel trained. Anyway, one night I fell asleep on the couch watching TV. My dad worked at four in the morning at the time and got up at 2.30 to get ready to go to work. He worked doubles at the county jail, about an hour away from our house. Anyway, I awoke to my dad cussing and the foul stench of dog crap. Ale had crapped in his kennel, but whiskey was completely broken through hers, like ripped hers apart to be next to me on the couch. Now, these are heavy-duty metal crates. My dad yelled at whiskey to go to him, she wouldn't budge. She was facing our big window, facing east. It also was a direct window of the front yard. I saw her hair standing up like she was ready to attack whatever invaded her space. She wouldn't leave my side even when my dad tried to grab her. When my dad opened the door, I could hear nothing. That oddly enough, nothing. No crickets, no other wildlife. Not even our cats. It made my hair stand on end. I cuddled the dog till I fell asleep again. My third and hopefully final experience happened with my best friend. She lives about a mile from me. This was the summer of 2016. She had turned 17 about a week before this. She had lived at this house for about a year and still does to this day. We were walking down the road at night. Nobody ever drives on her road because of how crappy it is due to it being like clay and sand mixed. So we walked down the road talking and getting away from her younger brother who was always up our butts trying to hang out with us whenever I was around. He didn't like going outside at night so it was our perfect getaway. 
We had our phones on us to use for flashlights, but we preferred just to walk in the dark and look at the stars. This night was cool, especially cool for a July night. There was a crescent moon out, so we had minimal lighting, but not enough to make out anything. Anyway, we were walking and we heard the snap of a branch on the ground. We both got quiet and held our breaths. We didn't see anything. Then I noticed it. It was that odd shape again. I waited for a few minutes. I then called out, Hello? Nothing responded. We're about 350 yards from her house, so we started walking back in a quick pace and didn't talk, trying to listen for anything. We hear it again, but louder and closer to her house. Then we heard something on the road following us, heavier footprints. We ran right to her house. We were frightened and panicked. Her mom asked us what's wrong. We told her what we heard. I joked and said it could have been the dog man. Her mom said, don't joke like that. But she said it with terror in her voice, like it may have been the creature. We didn't go out at night anymore. Well, Jeff, those are my experiences. Feel free to email me if you have any questions. I will answer them to the best of my knowledge. Thank you for taking the time to read them. Today's third subscriber Michigan Dogman Encounter. Hey Jeff, I hope you are doing well. I love listening to your channel. I have a few encounters of my own. I have not told anyone but my kids these experiences. A year ago, I had a stroke, so I wanted to question the people that happened to be around when we saw the dog man to make sure I was remembering correctly. My first encounter happened when I was seven or eight. My dad, my uncle, brother, and two cousins, and myself went fishing off the bay. We lived in Saginaw, Michigan then. When we were done fishing, we went back to my uncle's house. He had a shed out back, and he cleaned the fish in. So while my dad and my uncle are cleaning the fish, me and the boys played hide-and-seek in the backyard. I was hiding behind the shed, which was next to a railroad tracks in the woods. While my dad and uncle cleaned the fish, they just threw the guts out into the woods. I heard something big moving around on the other side of the shed. Thinking it was just my dad or my uncle, I stayed where I was but did look over to the area and saw this big wolf-faced creature with blue eyes. Its fur was black and gray. From that point, I don't remember much more. I guess I passed out and peed myself. Next thing I remember was everyone standing over me. My dad picked me up and took me inside to my aunt, who was an EMT. She told him she thought I was in shock. Her and my mom helped clean me up, and we went back home. For the next few days, I remember sleeping in my parents' room. Kept having nightmares of this big wolf trying to kill me. My second encounter, I was about 14, and my friend and I went for a walk to the store for some breadsticks and pop. This was the early 80s when kids weren't watched as closely as they are now. Going for a two-mile walk was not unheard of at that age. The sky was very weird looking. We found out later it was because of the northern lights. We lived in Zilwaukee, Michigan then. Everything was okay till the way back from the store when we saw this huge creature in the middle of the road where its back legs were in the middle of the ongoing lane and its front legs were in the middle of the oncoming. So it was about eight feet long. All you could see was its outline and glowing green eyes. We then slowly turned around and walked back to the store and called my dad to come and pick us up. We told him it was back. Knowing my ongoing nightmares of the big wolf, he came and got us. We saw nothing on the way home. My third encounter, I was about 18 years old, living in Lake Michigan, driving to Beaverton, Michigan to go to work. I was alone this time, driving down a back road going about 80. From my right side, I saw a deer come out of the woods running fast in front of my car. I slowed down, but still hit it. But there was this dog man chasing it. This one looked different from the other ones that I had seen. 
It looked like a lion's head with red eyes. It continued running into the other side of the road in the woods. I then noticed headlights coming up behind me. I pulled off to the side of the road. I was going to let it pass me. But the truck pulled up alongside of me and rolled the window down. Two men were in the truck. They asked if I was okay. I said, yeah, did you see it? They said they saw me hit the first deer. The guy on the passenger side got out of the car to look at my car. Said I split the deer in half, messed up my radiator. The grill was gone. The headlight was pointed up toward the trees. He asked me to get out and look at the car. I quickly said no, that something was chasing that deer, and it's still out here. He poured water into the radiator and told me they'd follow me for a bit to make sure my car didn't break down, which they did. I made it home safely. Number four, this, this one of them stories that you don't like because I didn't see it this time. Just felt uneasy and heard a howl. My best friend and I were going up to his cabin in Rogers City, Michigan. He took the wrong turn. I immediately felt uneasy and told him to get us out of there. It was a dead-end road, woods all around. Then we heard the howl, long and like nothing I had ever heard before. I now live with him and have that uneasy feeling every night when I go outside on the back porch. It's an old farmhouse surrounded by cornfields. Today's fourth Michigan subscriber dog man encounter. Hey Jeff, hope you're doing well. Thank you for what you do. I really enjoy listening to your encounters you share. Just out of curiosity, have you ever heard of anyone sharing a dog man encounter in central Oregon? I'm hoping they're not here since I have not heard of any encounters. Anyway, I grew up in a county in Michigan many, many years ago. My sister, who lived down the road from my parents, they actually gifted her and her husband a few acres that adjoined my folks' property. And I went for a walk one summer day. I can't remember what day it was or time. Around the block, two miles around. When we were about a mile from home, we heard the most god-awful, unreal howl scared the bejesuses out of us. My sister and I looked at each other and said, what was that? It sounded like it was about a mile away to the north of us. We just heard it that one time, but it freaked us out, both out, because it didn't really sound like any dog we had ever heard. In fact, it sounded like the howl from a wolf in the movie American Werewolf in London, when in spite of the warnings from the gentleman in the pub at the slaughtered lamb, the two backpackers realized they had just strayed off the road onto the moors. It was a scary sound. Fast forward about 30 years later, and my dad saw something on our property that badly shook him, and he was not someone easily shook or to get shaken. He's over six feet tall with a John Wayne demeanor. He looked like him too, except better looking. He was a kind man that you would want on your side in any dangerous situation, tough, fearless, and totally dependable. Anyway, he was walking in the yard toward the horse barn and saw something down by the woods that made him duck into the horse barn so as not to be seen by this thing. My sister, the same one I had taken a walk with, it was years ago when we heard the howl, had just walked up to her house and could see my dad was visibly shaken. She asked him what was wrong, and because it had just happened, my dad said if he didn't know better, he would have sworn he had just seen a wolf, but it was moving, walking funny. He said he wished he had had his gun. When my sister pressed him for more details, he clammed up and didn't say anything more. And later, when my older sister asked him about it, he would refuse to say anything else and would always change the subject. My dad has passed away now, but... We still have his property with horses, and sometimes the horses are very spooked and will just about drag my sister off her feet to get into the barn and out of the pasture away from those woods. It really freaks me out, and one of the reasons I don't want to move back there, even though my siblings are all there. Who knows what made that sound my sister and I heard? 
Or what my dad saw. Dog man. That's what I'd guess. Today's fifth subscriber dog man encounter. Hey Jeff, how are you? My first dog man encounter. Let me tell you, they are real. And I don't believe in things that cannot be proven, but seeing is believing. My sighting was late afternoon, about 4.30, on North Ridge Road, heading south towards Alexandria. I was over halfway to Alexandria when I was looking to the right in a small clearing of grass when I see a very large dog sitting very still, very close to the road. So close, we made eye contact. I could tell its eyes were a dark amber and its coat of fear was a black brindle. It was a muscle mass. It was crazy for a dog. I'm an ex-dog breeder of large rare dog breeds and I know dogs and this was no normal dog. Looking back, I think I heard my box truck coming up and sat down to act like a regular dog. But I got a good look at it. And though this thing can kill a person with ease, I must say it almost fools you until you see the chest and arms, meaning its front legs while it was sitting and its front legs are way too long for a normal dog. Its arms and chest deltoid definition was incredible. First thing you think it was on steroids. We eyed each other, and I drove right by slowly in shock at what I had just seen. It was hiding what it really was. It just did it in front of the wrong person. I know I didn't see it stand up, but those front legs and the size told me that it could. Anyway, never ride your bike or jog or walk on that road day or night. I'm not sure. If a handgun can stop it, you have a better chance with an AR of some sort. That's the truth. This sighting was in 2017. These things must be the creation of a mad scientist and should be stopped. In April of 2018, I was working. I had just dropped a load of freight in Detroit for my employer in the tractor trailer. I was heading back to Columbus on State Route 275. This event changed my life, meaning I will never enjoy camping, ATV riding in the woods again because of what I saw. Let me first say, if you ever break down on this road at night, never get out of your vehicle to investigate. Call AAA. Then I highly recommend you call a loved one and let them know your exact location, and here's why. It was just getting dark around 9.30, give or take a few minutes. A large craft uncloaked itself to my right as I drove south. It was floating in the opposite direction, and it had a slight spinning motion going on about it, like it was slowing down. Its lights were dim, and it had a 9 to 10 circular windows and they each had dimly lit lights and in the middle of each window had a dark spot that reminded me of a pupil of an eye. I did get the feeling I was being watched by the craft as it silently floated in the opposite direction. It was like pull over, get out, go figure. What am I about? All right, guys, just a lot of terrifying experiences. I hope you enjoyed them as much as I enjoyed sharing them with you. I'd like to thank you all for supporting the channel. Your support is honestly what makes this channel continue to grow and go and what makes it special. Everyone, please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, and friends. These creatures are real. They're out there. They're dangerous. Share this information with the people you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for answers. God bless.